subsequent to training at Fort Knox, uh, I was sent to Iraq in uh, September of 03, and I was assigned as a scout platoon leader at uh, in an area along the Syrian-Iraqi border known as Al-Walid, which is a border crossing point, also known as a port of entry. And it's one of the most strategically important uh, well, POEs in general, ports of entry in general, are very strategic because, as you know, Iraq is mostly a landlocked country. And commerce, flow, commerce and people flow through those ports of entry daily by the tens and hundreds of thousands. Uh, I was given 30 to 40 soldiers to deal with uh, an enormous uh, border crossing facility to patrol 100 plus linear kilometers of Syrian Iraqi border and to patrol and be responsible for the security and development of between five and 10,000 square kilometers of Al Ambar Desert with 30 to 40 soldiers. That Parsons and other American contractors, Bechtel, North Star, et cetera, which have been written about extensively in various news uh, 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 mediums, that, uh, that of $500 million given in U.S. taxpayer dollars given to Parsons for buildings, health, and education sectors, only three of, ele of 11 construction projects have been completed. Um, and 141 primary health care centers to the tune of 186 million American taxpayer dollars were not, uh, were not built. I was privy to generals, colonels, conferences with Abizade, Casey, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, in, uh, where is it? Okay, I have, I have evidence in the way of, of resolution notes dated 29 November 05 between a meeting between General, B Deputy Commanding General Kevin Bergner, who was the Deputy Commanding General of Task Force Freedom which was in charge of Mosul and northern Iraq in 2005, between the deputy commanding general of, of CPAT, which is the Civilian Police Assistance Transition Team Iraq, which is a sub-entity of Minstiki, the Multinational Security Transition Command Iraq, which was headed by Petraeus at the time. And in his notes, in their correspondence, uh, is a segment titled Mosul Warehouse SOP, and, the, and, and these, are, these are quotations from the document itself. This is literal, uh, uh, these, are, these, are, these are literal statements from Bergner to Chuck Taylor or Brigadier General Waters, both of whom were Deputy Commanding Generals of CPAT under General Joseph Phil, who I will also speak of uh, on Sunday in the panel. It's, and here it is, and I know I'm, I'm I'm taking a little bit more time. I promise I'll wrap up. Uh, the, the issue that they brought, that, that General Bergner brought in November of 2005, is, quote, there is no Minsticky CPAT guidance on how to request, issue, and account for issued Iraqi police equipment. Discussion. Currently, there is no regulation or standard operating procedure pertaining to the issue, receipt, storage of Iraqi police equipment. In addition, there is no guidance on the operation of the LDI warehouse or the responsibilities of Task Force Freedom, Task Force Freedom vis a vis the LDI warehouse. The LDI warehouse, I'll let you know, is, 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 uh, is the acronym for Lee Dynamics International, which has recently come under fire um, and is being indicted, although I suspect the DOD will try to cover this up as they have so many other things. Um, but they, they go on to say that Task Force Freedom, uh, uh, Iraqi security forces cell in their operation security forces cell, drafted a basic SOP and provided a copy of this to CPAT and Minsticky. The recommendations that CPAT, uh, that they, they made, they offered recommendations <laughs> That CPAT, that CPAT issue guidance on, operate, on the operation of, 
of the warehouse, of the LDI warehouse, in order to enhance equipment responsibility at the warehouse, and that CPAT should also provide policy on command supply discipline. The response by CPAT, which was the only priority response in, in this memorandum, was that, was that they, Task Force Freedom, uh, create a memorandum of understanding between the provincial chief of police, who is an Iraqi, and Task Force Freedom, establishing and outlining the provincial chief of police responsibility to receipt, sign, and account for equipment. In addition, the provincial chief of police must appoint in writing a property book officer, a primary deputy, and an assistant and that this information should be provided to the Ministry of Interior through Iraqi channels and to, the, and to Men Sticky through Coalition Forces channels. In essence, what all of that means is that, is that LDI, who was given billions of American taxpayer dollars to procure supply, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, store, distribute, badly needed supplies to American soldiers to give, to, to, to give and support Iraqi police and other Iraqi security forces uh, was, uh, was non-existent. There was no SOP that CPAT had no measure. CPAT, which had onus, which had the onus of responsibility of ensuring oversight over con contractors and the means with which they were, that they were purchasing and accounting for Iraqi security forces uh, uh, material purchased by ta U.S. taxpayer fo dollars did not occur. And, um, and uh, it's outrageous. And all of that leads back to, and in conclusion, all of that leads back to the fact that General Petraeus, okay, who's been, who's been uh, purporting, you know, surge success strategies through his massive information operations cell from MNFI headquarters in Iraq. Um, he was in charge of Minsticky. He was in charge of CPAT, and he failed to implement any systems of accountability for contractors who were given billions of dollars of American taxpayer dollars. And he has not been held accountable, nor has the, uh, the majority of contractors in Iraq, U.S. contractors, contractors in Iraq. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's outrageous that Congress and the American people have allowed this to go on uh, unchecked. <laughs> Thank you, Louise.